Now, in the previous section, I explained the two types of simple diffusion. Uh, and these are, and now to continue with passive transport is the third type of passive transport, which is facilitated diffusion. Now, the thing is, you've got particles like glucose, uh, sodium ions, uh, chloride ions, right? These are things that um, cells need, right? So we've got glucose, right? We've got uh, chloride ions, we've got sodium ions, and these are things, like I said, three chemicals that the cells need the most for survival. Now, the thing is, is they do not have the ability to get, go through here the phospholipid bilayer, right? As we said, this section here is considered hydrophilic. So large polar molecules like glucose, right? Glucose is a polar molecule, right? It has positive negative ends, right? The, the hydroxyl group, right? The OH group, in uh, glucose, just to kind of reiterate something I explained in my, some of my previous videos, uh, is what makes glucose very polar. So it does not um, allow for these types of, this kind of polarity or these kind of ions to pass easily through the hydrophilic ends of the phospholipid, right? So there's gotta be a different way in which, you know, these important particles can make their way from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell where they're needed. And what we have here is we've got these proteins that span across right, the entire uh, phospholipid bilayer. And these are called, as I mentioned before, transmembrane, and I mentioned this before in, um, when I was talking about simple diffusion, these transmembrane um, carrier proteins and they span across the entire uh, length or the, the entire thickness of the um, of the actual um, selectively permeable right as we said before selectively permeable cell membrane so this facilitated diffusion really is a diffusion of particles through the membrane that is helped by or assisted by these proteins right now these carrier proteins Right? They really help the diffusion to allow larger polar particles or uh, particles that actually have polar ends to pass through it, right? Now, an example pretty much of a, uh, a carrier protein facilitated diffusion uh, is pretty much the movement of glucose into the cells of liver, right? So if we're moving, let's say, glucose, and let's just assume the, this is glucose, uh, even though I actually, um, in my next, you know, later on, you'll see when uh, when I talk about glucose, and I'll show you glucose. So let's assume these are glucose particles. Right? Let's say it's a simplified version of a glucose particle. Now, what happens here in this type of facilitated diffusion? The solute of glucose, right? Glucose is a solute. It is what gets dissolved, let's say, in water. And we're gonna reiterate solute and solvent. And you should know this going into this biology course. But if not, uh, all, you can always go check out um, some of my earlier videos. So what happens here, now, with this protein, and let's get my pointer out, what's gonna happen is this protein is going to pretty much configure itself right to allow for a binding site so this opening here is a binding site for one of these particles let's say to bind within right so what happens is it, the the particle kind of closes itself and this membrane right pretty much you know restructures itself right so there's a structural change that goes on with this protein that enables it now to open up and allow this, let's say, glucose particle to make its way into the cell as it needs it. And then all of a sudden, this structural change kind of goes back to the beginning to allow for this binding site to occur again. Picks up a new particle, it closes, restructures itself, 
to allow for this particle now to make its way into the cell. And this does this until it reaches, as we said before, uh, with my uh, when we were talking about simple diffusion, it occurs until it reaches what we call a dynamic equilibrium. So it reaches it to the point until pretty much what we have will be an equal amount of particles on both the uh, outside of the cell and on inside of the cell. Sorry for it uh, for this movement. Created these shapes using Photoshop uh, to prevent any copyright uh, infringement um, with any of my images. But anyhow, this is what we call, like as we said, the dynamic equilibrium. And as we're going to talk about um, when we deal with active transport, right, which is the the you know the last type of diffusion, and that's active transport. How pretty much really you do not want glucose to reach what we call this dynamic equilibrium. Because let's face it, we need glucose as a source of energy, right? So if glucose molecules we ingest, right, we take in glucose molecules, right, and we only bring in half the quantity of glucose into our cells, then, well, what's the point, right? So ultimately, maybe glucose wasn't the best example to use, but I just kind of wanted to uh, explain one type of uh, facilitated diffusion and yeah to some extent um, it does reach a dynamic equilibrium and then it pretty much shifts over to what we call the active transport as we're going to see a little bit later.